Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Adrienne Rich. She was an American poet and essayist who lived from 1929 to 2012. And she's often called, quote, one of the most widely read and influential poets of the second half of the 20th century. Her first collection, which was called A Change of World, was selected by W.H. Auden uh, for the Yale Series of Younger Poets Awards. She received the National Medal of the Arts, or at least was awarded it, but then declined the vote after uh, Speaker Newt Gingrich uh, voted to end funding for the National Endowment for the Arts. It's a uh, pretty famous uh, moment in her life. The poem that I'm going to read today is eh, probably her most famous one, certainly one of her more famous poems, and it's called Diving Into the Wreck. It's a little bit long f- uh, compared to most of the poems that I read on this show, but it's, uh, it's a pretty quick read given that. So here it is, Adrienne Rich's Diving Into the Wreck. First having read the book of myths and loaded the camera and checked the edge of the knife blade, I put on the body armor of black rubber and absurd flippers, the grave and awkward mask. I'm having to do this, not like Cousteau with his assiduous team aboard the sun-floated schooner, but here alone. There is a ladder. The ladder is always there, hanging innocently close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for, we who have used it. Otherwise, it's a piece of maritime floss, some sundry equipment. I go down, rung after rung, and still the oxygen immerses me, the blue light, the clear atoms of our human air. I go down. My flippers cripple me. I crawl like an insect down the ladder and there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin. First the air is blue, and then it is bluer, and then green, and then black. I'm blacking out, and yet my mask is powerful. It pumps my blood with power. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power. I have to learn alone to turn my body without force in the deep element. And now, it is easy to forget what I came for, among so many who have always lived here, swaying their crenellated fans between the reefs, And besides, you breathe differently down here. I came to explore the wreck. The words are purposes. The words are maps. I came to see the damage that was done. And the treasures that prevail. I stroke the beam of my lamp slowly along the flank of something more permanent than fish or weed. The thing I came for, the wreck and not the story of the wreck, the thing itself and not the myth, the drowned face always staring toward the sun, the evidence of damage worn by salt and sway into this threadbare beauty, the ribs of the disaster curving their assertion among the tentative haunters. This is the place, and I'm here, the mermaid whose dark hair streams black, the merman in his armored body. We circle silently about the wreck, we dive into the hold. I am she. I am he whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes, whose breasts still bear the stress, whose silver copper vermeil cargo lies obscurely inside barrels, half wedged and left to rot. We are the half destroyed instruments that once held to a course, the water eaten log, the fouled compass. We are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the one who find our way back to this scene, carrying a knife, a camera a book of myths in which our names do not appear. I'm reading this poem by Adrian Rich from a book called The Making of a Poem, A Norton Anthology of Poetic Forms by Mark Strand and Avon Boland. And they have a little uh, section in there on open forms. And that is uh, certainly um, what this poem would fit into, what the category. And for each section on the different poetic forms in in the book, they feature one particular poem. And they feature this poem. And I wanted to to share some of the comments that they write here. Uh, I figure, what's the point of trying to come up with something original when someone else says something better than what I could say? And I think this would be of more value to you. And And it notes this, quote, As a young poet, Rich was influenced by the ethos of the American mid-century. Her first book won the Yale Young Poets Award and she wrote in forms. In those years, she wrote in an essay called When We Dead Awaken, formalism was part of the strategy. Like asbestos gloves, it allowed me to handle materials I couldn't pick up barehanded. Diving into the wreck 
employs subtle yet fierce arguments with the poetic tradition, while elaborating on and subverting the shadows, plays, and past of canonical power. The speaker has the authoritative tone of a speaker in the grand tradition, but the enterprise is entirely different. Whereas poets of the past meditated on the power and eloquence of expression, this poem, with its open weave of phrase, stanza, vernacular, and off-kilter music, puts that voice at the service of powerlessness and silence. The form challenges the past while adding to it. This is a poem that mixes a panorama of the narrative, the lyric, and the dream convention to achieve its powerful conclusion. End quote. Those two paragraphs, again, are from uh, Mark Strand and Avon Bolon's The Making of a Poem, a Norton Anthology of Poetic Forms. If you have the book, you can find it on page 287. They're the, their paragraphs. I once read about this poem somewhere, and I, I wish I could remember where, um, that, that what Adrian Rich does here is both extremely personal and completely universal at the same time. That means, of course, that, that she is able to express these deeply personal um, inner movements and perhaps even something that really happened. Perhaps she really did go to the bottom of the ocean and find a shipwreck or something like that. But she's able to take the very personal elements of that and make them truly universal, allow them to reflect on um, transcendent universal ideas, ideas about poetry, about expression, about poetic forms, um, about exploration about myth, all the things that were referenced in that poem, but do that in a way that appeals to everyone. So it takes the particular and makes it universal, uh, like so many great poems over the years. Cheryl Walker wrote in a, in a piece in The Nation in 1973 that, quote, the poem is utterly personal, but there is nothing in it which draws away into personal life. And I really like the way that that was put. So uh, once more, here is Adrian Rich's Diving Into the Wreck. First, having read the book of myths and loaded the camera and checked the edge of the knife blade, I put on the body armor of black rubber, the absurd flippers, the grave and awkward mask. I'm having to do this not like Cousteau with his assiduous team aboard the sun-flooded schooner, but here alone. There is a ladder. The ladder is always there, hanging innocently close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for, we who have used it. Otherwise, it's a piece of maritime floss, some sundry equipment. I go down, rung after rung, and still the oxygen immerses me, the blue light, the clear atoms of our human air. I go down. My flippers cripple me. I crawl like an insect down the ladder, and there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin. First, the air is blue and then it is bluer, and then green, and then black. I'm blacking out, and yet my mask is powerful. It pumps my blood with power. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power. I have to learn alone to turn my body without force in the deep element. And now, it is easy to forget what I came for, among so many who have always lived here, swaying in their crenellated fans. Between the reefs, and besides, you breathe differently down here. I came to explore the wreck. The words are purposes. The words are maps. I came to see the damage that was done and the treasures that prevail. I stroke the beam of my lamp slowly along the flank of something more permanent than fish or weed. The thing I came for. The wreck and not the story of the wreck. The thing itself and not the myth. The drowned face always staring toward the sun. The evidence of damage worn by salt and sway into this threadbare beauty. The ribs of the disaster curving their assertion among the tentative haunters. This is the place. And I am here. The mermaid whose dark hair streams black. The merman in his armored body. We circle silently about the wreck. We dive into the hold. I am she, I am he, whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes, whose breasts still bear the stress, whose silver copper vermeil cargo lies obscurely inside barrels half wedged and left to rot. We are the half destroyed instruments that once held to a course the water eaten log, the fouled compass. We are. I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the one who find our way back to this scene, carrying a knife, a camera, a book of myths in which our names do not appear. 
This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you so much for listening. I will be back on Monday with another poem for you. Thank you.